Let's head to Downing Street now. Our political correspondent, Rob Powell, has just come out of a number 10 briefing. Hello to you, Rob. Uh, developments this morning on the national living wage and also the Prime Minister's assessment ahead of COP26. Let's start with the, the national living wage to rise in Wednesday's budget. Yeah, revealed by the Treasury uh, in the last five minutes that the national living wage and the national minimum wage, living wage applies to over 23s, the living wage, uh, the minimum wage applies to everyone, that that will uh, rise. The exact amounts um, are that the living wage, that's the one for older people, goes from £8.91 to £9.50 an hour, so an extra, the Treasury says, £1,000 uh, a year for a full-time worker. Uh, and from the 1st of April as well, young people and apprentices will get the national minimum wage, that's for people aged 20. 21 and 22, that will go up uh, to £9.18 um, uh, as well. So this was broadly expected. The previous Chancellor laid out some years ago that he wanted to see the uh, national living wage get um, up above £10 per hour by around 2024. And it is previously in line with uh, increases we've had in the past um, to the living wage. But I think when um, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, announces his budget on Wednesday, we can expect them to link this to one of the themes that we may well hear in that budget around the cost of living. We have seen energy bills increase, we have seen petrol prices go up uh, and inflation running um, higher than it has been. And I think you can expect the Chancellor to link this announcement to uh, their um, ambition to help people um, on the lowest wages tackle those rising costs. Uh, of course, the traditional critique from some in business um, of increases to things like the minimum wage and the living wage um, is that it forces companies to lay off workers because they can't afford to pay them more. Now, um, experts since then have said there's not actually any real evidence um, of that happening. But it does tie into a sort of broader worry um, about the government's plan to try and move to an economy where people are paid more, a high wage economy, that businesses um, worry that the way that you pay for those wage increases is through higher prices. And higher prices um, clearly eats into those wage increases um, and negates them, especially for people who may not get um, higher wage increases. So the answer, I suspect, if it was put to the Chancellor, would be that productivity needs to go up as well. And he would point to things like the £3 billion that's been invested to help people reskill and upskill so that businesses um, can produce more, take more in and are able to pay their employers more. Uh, Rob, we, we've also had the Prime Minister talking to children earlier on today and giving a fairly pessimistic assessment of the prospects of COP26. What have Downing Street had to say about that? Yeah, the Prime Minister's been holding um, a press conference with some school pupils in the last couple of hours um, in which he spoke about the climate conference that's due to begin in the coming days um, in Glasgow. And actually, he, he came out with... Uh, probably one of the more pessimistic-sounding readings of how he thinks preparation and the ambitions for the COP conference um, are, are going. Um, he said that he thought that success at that conference um, would be, uh, in his words, um, touch and go, uh, and he was very worried um, about it uh, as well. Now, we've just had uh, what's the daily briefing where political journalists go into um, a briefing room just up the road at number nine Downing Street and are able to quiz the Prime Minister's um, official spokesperson uh, about whatever they want, uh, and he was asked um, about that, about whether what the Prime Minister was playing at is essentially trying to manage expectations, talk down your ambitions for the conference so then if something comes out of it you can claim success uh, and the Prime Minister's spokesperson uh, said that wasn't what was going on but he also did um, admit that actually uh, there were big challenges for the Glasgow conference and the fact was the fact that we're still working through the previous climate conference in Paris shows how difficult um, this is so he didn't deny that this is going to be difficult um, but uh, said that this wasn't some sort of media strategy by the Prime Minister to manage expectations. I think um, there are a few sceptical eyebrows going uh, around among journalists when he said that, though. Also, one of the more unusual interventions we had from the Prime Minister in that press conference with school pupils uh, was a suggestion that to rebalance nature, perhaps we could think about feeding humans to animals. Uh, now, as you would expect, the Prime Minister's spokesperson was asked about that as well, but said that um, that was not to be taken seriously. So, uh, not a new policy from the government, feeding humans to animals. Journalist cynical, who would ever have thought it? Rob Powell in Downing Street for us. Thank you.